All right, just a little pro tip uh, before we get started. I'm actually going to be working on the buggy while it's on my trailer. Uh, it's just, it's kind of more convenient for me. It elevates it up just a little bit. Um, it'll, it'll maybe, um, maybe once I actually have to start getting back in there, I'll regret it cause I'll be bent over. But, uh, one of the other pro tips is, is I always set up kind of this rag area where, uh, this is where I'm actually going to be putting the engine parts. I'm going to, I always, you know, start in a grid pattern, you know, top left and I work my way, you know, kind of like you would read a book, I guess, uh, and it, that's going to help me kind of put the parts back in order, uh, the same bolts. So as I take it off, I literally like do uh, uh, an, an organized how I put things back down on the racks. And that way I don't forget to put any parts back in. Uh, helps with that too. So anyways, just a little pro tip as I'm getting started here. So uh, first coming off is the exhaust. Okay, so first off with the exhaust, these are actually two 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, and then these are 14 millimeters. Uh, these are my own bolts though, because I kind of like redid this exhaust. So they, it's probably, it may not be the right, the same size bolts. Uh, I would imagine they stuck with 12 millimeter, uh, for both, uh, of those connections, but not sure if you can see that, but that bolt bottom bolt works really well. Just as it says in the service manual, you can see a nice steady stream of, uh, nice clean, um, reusable coolant flowing out of there. So that's the bottom bolt on the water pump I'm using. One of the things I'm trying to figure out is I, I, like these, these hot, uh, or they have the has been hot one inch coolant lines, you know, hooked up to, uh, the cylinder head here. I'm I'm trying to figure out the best way if I should undo the hose clamp or if I should undo this eight millimeter screw, this eight millimeter bolt, uh, and then just pull it out. I think I'm gonna go for the bolt because anything that's I'm tr that's rubber that I'm trying to pull off, they usually have barbed fittings or something, and they're really hard to get off. So I'm actually gonna go for that eight millimeter that's blurred out by the flashlight right now, right, uh, um, right there at the tip of my finger. I'm gonna pull that bad boy out and see how that works. Okay, so it was easier to just pull the rubber off. I actually did undo that eight millimeter and I pulled on this little valve assembly uh, with all my might and with at the risk of hurting myself, I stopped and just decided, okay, I'm gonna take this off. Pro tip though, um, I use my heat gun to, I heat up the rubber and it actually makes it a little more pliable. I don't know, it's not cold weather in here in my garage, it's probably 60 degrees, but all right, so as for the second and last of the coolant lines, uh, it's this one right on the cylinder. So I might have to do the same thing, but I'm gonna pull this off. Uh, and then that should be it for basically hoses and, and everything else that's hooked you know, to the, to, the, to the head, which is what I'm trying to get at here. So let's take it from here. Okay, I've removed exhaust, I've turned off the gas, carburetor's out, uh, the spark plug is out, I've drained the coolant, so now I just need to remove the oil line. The only thing I actually have to undo is this one 10 millimeter bolt up top. I think from that point, everything else can be out of the way. I don't think I need to remove the entire thing from the engine. It could just kind of hang there in space once I get the three uh, top end sections out. So it's a 10 millimeter bolt up top. So can I make the humblest of suggestions? Get yourself one of these. I don't care what your preference for a tool brand is. If you're too good to shop at Harbor Freight, I don't give a crap. You want to go pay 4X and buy a Snap-on or whatever, just do it. You've got to have one of these little air ratchets because I just took, like, like with what it would take <sighs> gymnastics-wise to move my hands around in there and ratchet back and forth, you know, a couple hundred times to get these, uh, what is it, five bolts out, like this, this zipped those out of there, all five bolts, and I was done in about 20 seconds. All of them were done. So uh, I highly suggest picking one up. They are so choice. Okay, so I've just pulled all the, the bolt. The There's five bolts to, to get the very top uh, cap off of the valve cover. And what I did is I started with the one uh, valve uh, 
cover, or I guess this, this would be the exhaust valve right here, that corner. And then I went counterclockwise, and this is, you know, this is how they went. And they're all, I think they're all different sizes. These, actually, these three might be the same size. But, um, again, I'm just pulling things off in order. I'm just kind of neatly, you know, trying to lay things out so I know exactly which order they go back in. So I don't have to go back and look at the manufacturer schematic later and figure out, oh, does this one go here, this one go there? It's just going to save me some time. Okay, so I've got the valve cover off. Um, this is what I've got inside. Now what's interesting is if I look at the profile of the gasket here, I actually see some variation in squeeze out of whatever gasket material they used on this before, which could, which actually could mean that this is part of my problem, maybe, because if, if you, if you set the valves, right, and these are off, and, and this head was crooked. I mean, there could have been something. There could have been some issues with that. So I'm just going to I'm gonna make a note of that as I'm pulling it apart, that the head could have been on crooked. Um, so I'm going to definitely have to redo that gasket. Um, I'm pulling all of that off of there. Um, and, and then, you know, kind of looking at the... Looking at the lobes and everything actually oh sorry the, the cam's not uh this isn't the cam I'll, I'll i'll pull the uh the cam out here in a second we'll take a look at it okay so we've got the uh we've got the valve cover off so i've got the camshaft exposed i've got the valve springs exposed you'll notice there's actually two valve springs per valve so there's a smaller inner spring and then a larger outer spring uh, i'll deal with that when we actually get it off of the buggy um so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these four bolts uh, basically on the cam bearings uh, and then we'll lift the cam out. I'm also going to bungee cord, I'm going to bungee cord the chain because I don't want the chain to just fall down in the crankcase. So once I get the camshaft out, I'm constantly going to have a bungee cord hanging up, you know, on one of these rails or something. Uh, just making sure the chain is always, there's always tension on it. Um, I just don't want to go fishing for it. Uh, so we're going to go to that point. Right now, um, I've got a couple more bolts uh, that I need to just pull off here. One, two, and then there's two on the other side, I believe, uh, so that I can get the, uh, the valve assembly off and expose the top of the piston. So uh, we're going to go to that point. And then I actually am top dead center. So you'll notice that there's a flat dash on this side and a flat dash on this side. And then um, this... This is actually kind of handy because it looks to me like the uh, it has a, a another dot up here or a hollow point, and then I can also actually match this up by looking down here in the in the window. I can actually look on the magneto uh, rotor, and I can see the timing mark uh, on the very top. I can't show that on camera because it's actually on the top of the piston. You know, I. I when I actually took the, the stator apart to replace the stator, I should have, and this is something you should do if you ever take your stator off, I should have just, you know, taken a hammer and a nail and just made a little nick right on this sidewall of the magnet. That way, it's just easier to see where your actual timing marks are because, like I said, they're all stamped on the top, uh, on the top here, and the window's on the side. It's a little inconvenient that way, but... Okay, uh, so I've got some more bolts to pull off, and... Uh, and then we'll get the valve assembly out of there. And the timing chain uh, is the only thing uh, on, at the second level that will remain. Okay, so uh, one thing that I actually didn't have on my plan, on my list, is I had to I have to remove the chain tensioner. Okay, which that's it's sitting right there. But it was located right there. You can kind of see, let's see if I can get a good angle with the light. Um... So just right below the exhaust, it's like right there where the flashlight is. So I had to pull the chain tensioner out. Otherwise, I can't, I can't get enough slack on the chain to actually get the timing chain off of the cam. So now that I've actually removed the, 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 chain, the tensioner, now I've got enough slack to do that. So I can actually just work this chain off of the cam and pull it out. All right, so I got the cam out. That was, that was actually pretty easy. So 
one thing that I want to make a note of, um, we got this big old cavity here, right? All the way down into the crankcase where that timing chain goes. It wraps around the main crankshaft and our goal in this project is to not is to only address the top end. I have no reason to open the crankcase, right? I don't wanna to have to open the crankcase. So don't give me a reason to open the crankcase. And what I'm getting at is I had a, a lively debate with uh, somebody online about uh, this very process. And I think he is definitely wrong because I suggested it was another video. I think the guy's name was like China Motors or whatever. And I just put in the comments there, hey guys, pro tip, uh, probably a good idea to just like shove a rag down the timing chain hole. So that as you're pulling these other, you know, 12 millimeter nuts off to actually remove the middle uh, valve body section uh, that you don't actually end up, accidentally just end up dropping something down there. He made it a point to tell me, you know, like what a terrible mechanic I am because I take precautions. I should just be able to not make any mistakes and drop anything down there. So I, I just highly recommend, I'm gonna take some uh, shop some shop towels and shove them down in this, in this, uh, uh, in the timing chain uh, cavity because I do not wanna find myself in that situation and prevention is, uh, is worth uh, two hours of your time. So there's my soapbox speech on that. Okay, so now, I've got, uh, I got all the, the, I got the four 12 millimeter nuts out of there. Uh, there were two eight millimeter bolts on this side that were basically just, you know, holding a bracket, but you can tell they also, they're used to, to help secure onto the, the cylinder body. There, there are not two bolts on the other side, so there's only just these two, um, but you can kind of see now I've got, now I've got loose, uh, a loose uh, head assembly. So now I'm just going to not make sure that I don't let go of the chain. So I'm just going to kind of fish the chain through there while I lift this up and slide these off of the bolts. And I'm actually going to see if I can save the head gasket or see if the head gasket is actually still in halfway decent uh, condition. I do have a new one on the way. I'm going to replace it anyways, but it'll actually, you know, I'm looking for evidence that this was part of the reason I was losing compression. All right. So just because I'm doing this in the engine, like, uh, there's this bar, uh, this you know structural bar on the buggy that's actually in the way. So when that, instead of just sliding it off, I actually have to take off uh, the intake port, which I need some, I guess I need some Allen keys for that, but I gotta take that off. I have a new one on the way anyways, because I do have a, some you know small suspicion that I'm getting some vacuum leakage. So I'm replacing this old rubber anyway, so. Got to take that off so that this thing will slide off. Just kind of one more thing to add to my list. Okay, so now we got the uh, the valve body off. I've got uh, I've got the head gasket right here. Okay, the head gasket actually doesn't look like it's too bad of shape. I'm gonna it's got a bunch of oil on it now. I'm gonna clean it up and we'll kind of just see if I see any blowouts or any evidence of that's where I'm losing compression. Top of the piston, um, it's not terrible, but yeah, you can tell this thing's been running rich. Um, there's been a lot of fuel in there that has uh, left a lot of carbon deposits, a lot of inefficient uh, combustion. So uh, now uh, at this point, I can just basically uh, loosen, uh, I think one more bolt. I think one more bolt here and I'll be able to slide off the uh, the cylinder and then we'll expose the piston and go from there. Okay, so we got the, uh, the cylinder is now lifted off of the crankcase. I can definitely see the, the cylinder gasket is messed up. I'm glad I got a new one on the way. Um, the thing actually was somewhat difficult. It was stuck on there pretty good. I actually had to use a dead blow hammer uh, and smack it a couple times to to get it loose. Do not use a metal hammer. Just use a dead blow hammer. If you don't have a dead blow hammer, then you're better off just blowing on it. Do not hit it with a hammer. If you're, if, especially if you plan on reusing it. Um, I guess if you don't plan on, if you plan on replacing the the cylinder, then uh, do whatever you want. But I. Uh, I used a dead blow hammer and it worked pretty good. So, so now again, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to keep track of uh, my timing chain, and I'm also going to be very conscientious of things 
uh, dirt and stuff falling down in, in this uh, cavity. So um, I don't want big chunks of whatever. There's a lot of dirt on this machine, not above it. There's not a lot that can fall on it, but I just want to be careful. So uh, once I get that out, uh, we'll have the piston left and we'll be good. So let's, uh, let's go, let's do, we'll remove the cylinder body and then we'll remove the piston. And then I think we're gonna call it a night. All right, so here we go. Uh, I've got the top end completely dismantled. So here is, here's what's left. We got crankcase and we got a big old connecting rod sticking out of there. And uh, I've got some cleanup to do on the very top there. You can see there's a lot of gasket material and stuff. I gotta get cleaned off of there and we're gonna hit the reset button on that stuff. Um, looking at the piston, I don't see any, I mean, there's no cracks. It's not, uh, it's it's definitely, there's no catastrophic failure here. Um, I'm looking at the, the, the clocking of the piston rings. That's a big old gap right there. Actually, I gotta close this and see. I'm wondering. If, I'm. I'm just wondering if the if the pistons are gapped wrong. I mean, that looks like a pretty big gap right there. I guess it's not fully compressed. Let me. I'll, okay, so I'll have to kind of like figure. I'll have to look at that, but but kind of going around the rest of the piston. Like, I mean, I don't see any like any catastrophic failure. I, I'm not seeing that. Um, and either the uh, the valve assembly or the cylinder, like the head has uh i gotta dump the soil out but, but i i did turn it over and look and there's there's just quite a bit of carbon deposit on the valves themselves and maybe you know maybe this just needs a good valve lapping uh and then i need to ensure that it doesn't run rich in the future where you know carbon deposits could be the reason that uh one or both of the valves are not closing and seating properly. So I do plan to lap, uh, I'm gonna lap the valve, uh, the valves on this assembly, even even though I'm putting new valves in, I wanna make sure I lap the the, the surface of the, the head itself, just to, I'll get, I gotta get some grinding compound from uh, AutoZone or whatever, I'll find some. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put a little bit of that in, in this video. Uh, and, uh, Again, I'm just waiting for parts. So I, I, I'm looking at the cylinder wall. Uh, it's, it's usually really hard to tell if there's actually something wrong with a cylinder wall. You know, I need a microm micrometer and stuff to, to figure out if it's the right diameter. But I mean, I don't see any scratches, you know. I don't see any burn marks. I don't see anything, uh, any reason that, you know, this would have had some, you know, catastrophic failure, but... Uh, there is a chance that the this gasket was leaking. Although, again, it was hard to tell because there's so much oil on the back of it anyways. So, um, so uh, I've accomplished, I've basically accomplished, uh, you know, one through 20 here. Uh, I did, uh, again, along the way, I had some, some additions that I need to put in there. Um, but I'll tell you guys, having a plan made all the difference in the world. Having a written down plan. This is, this is what uh, I need to make sure that I go do. Uh, this is after I re was researching the service manual. And then from the service manual, I kind of went off my own past experience. Like, what are the steps that I actually need to make sure that I do um, so that I don't mess this thing up. And, uh, I, you know, I, shrew I don't want to shrewd it. If I shrewd it, then the whole thing is blown. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, I, I think we're going to make this part one. This is probably long enough to be a part one. Uh, and then part two is going to be when the parts get here, or we're going to do reassembly. I'll show you lapping the valves and, and all that other good stuff of, uh, pulling her all back together. But it, it, it pays, I kind of got my tool mess over here, but it pays to just kind of have a nice organized, you know, a uh, way to lay out all your parts. Everything's organized. I know what parts came off. I know where they go. I know I know which order I took them off because I went from left to right at the top and then I came back here and started, you know, left to right. Actually, this piston needs to go over uh, here. And the connecting rod. Now, now we're back in order. So, all right. Uh, Till next time. Thanks for watching.